Okay, so yeah, onto Lighthouse 5. Um, so it's launching, as I said, launching here at Cisco Live. Um, it's our central management software. So all of our devices, the stuff that we sell, are, are fully self-contained in terms of out-of-band management um, solutions. So if you don't want to use Lighthouse 5, we're not, we're not twisting your arm. You just everything that you need to manage your networks inside one of these boxes. If you're managing five net, you know, five different sites, 100 different sites, 1,000 different sites, then that's what Lighthouse 5 is for. So really it's a, a central access aggregator, concentrator, and central management portal. Um, it's a VM, so it's not like a service or uh, anything like that. So our users run it on their own networks, um, which has been um, uh, basically what they've been asking for, right? Is that going to be available in... AWS format, Docker, anything like that? Yeah, we're not quite there yet with that. So we support VMware and Linux KVM um, in terms of hypervisors, um, but we're adding support for yeah, AWS, Azure, and, and uh, yeah, we'll look at Docker as well. Okay. Cool, and um, in terms of, um, you know, we call it Light Lighthouse 5, um, but you know, it probably should be called like Lighthouse 1000 or 10 or X or something like that, because it's a complete re-architecture, right? From the OS up, we literally got a new Linux distribution based on Yocto Linux. New UI, as I said, it's like an Ember.js um, UI layered over the RESTful API, new CLI, new config language, uh, new config schema, um, new config backend using MariaDB, um, and a new uh, management network architecture, which is quite cool. I'll show you in a minute, too. Um, so actually, yeah, have a link there if you want to have a look, um, log into my, um, my lab in, well, actually, this one's running out in the cloud, but it's kind of connected to a couple of boxes in my lab in Cambridge. Um, then there's the credentials too. So it's just like the hashtag as the password. So all the messaging between the this and your endpoints and the API, everything's RESTful? You're not using MQTT or That's right, yeah, any yeah, sort all, of messaging broker? Okay. Yeah, so the, the only exception is the actual SSH um, consoles through to the, to the uh, managed devices. That's like a proxy, um, but yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. Is that available through the API? Uh, you, Yes, you can get you can get the links, and I, I, okay. might, I may or may not may not show you that later. Uh, so, just a really quick um, overview of the new features, and I guess this is you know as much for context for the demo as anything. Uh, but yeah, Lighthouse VPN is our new network architecture, so it's kind of like a virtual management WAN that we're uh, that we've implemented using OpenVPN. Uh, improvements to our console gateway, which is, I guess, our SSH um, and HTTPS console concentrator, so you can get to all your, your, your console devices, you know, your connected routers and switches and things like that through the one point. We have introduced central user man management, and that's got like TACAX, Radius, um, uh, Active Directory, and Open LDAP um, support as well. Uh, zero touch enrollment, which is pretty cool, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, RESTful API we talked about, and also we're adding support for third-party console servers, um, like as a, you know, kind of a, a, it doesn't quite have all the uh, bells, bells and whistles, but you'll be able to manage things like Cisco terminal servers and old legacy Abyssin and Cyclades console servers through Lighthouse as well. Um, yeah, so this is basically, you know, what Open Gear looks like in the rack, right? And just starting off with a bit of terminology, as I said, we've, we're kind of introducing a bit of new um, nomenclature here. Uh, we're calling our devices, our appliances, nodes, um, just to be consistent because we've got, you know, resilience gateways, infrastructure managers, console servers, and things like that. From Lighthouse perspective, they're all nodes. Um, so Lighthouse is a bit different in terms of, um, it's not like central, like traditional central management software. What it does, it actually uh, enrolls all these different hardware devices on your different locations in your network as management nodes. Um, and that's how we get, you know, that presence and proximity around your network, right? Um, and managed devices, when we talk about managed devices, we're literally talking about the stuff that's connected via console. So that's your RS-232 and USB consoles, routers, switches, firewalls, load balancers, um, PDUs, all that kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> you mentioned that communication between the nodes and Lighthouse happens from re in RESTful calls. How do you handle third party? Right, because they're not going to be doing the same. Yeah, no. So, so they do behave uh, a fair bit differently. So I'll just just quickly show you the the, the architecture here in terms of how the node talks to to Lighthouse. Um, when you enroll a node with Lighthouse, it'll um, bring up a northbound Lighthouse VPN, which is an open open VPN connection, and then Lighthouse will do all the management over the um, over over that VPN using the, the RESTful calls with the. Um, uh, third party nodes, Lighthouse is literally just making SSH connections out. So it's, it's nowhere near as uh, sophisticated as, as what we've got here. Um, but the idea is um, if you've got a large, you know, flat data center type network and you're, you've got all this, you know, because out of band um, gear, the refresh cycle isn't, you know, it, they kind of sit there and they just do their job, you know, for eight, 10, 12 years or whatever. Right. Um, but 
you know, we're, we're getting to the EOL of particularly some, you know, the, the terminal servers, the popular terminal servers. So um, this is a, a way that you can basically um, make that transition, right? So you can enroll all your, uh, your old legacy gear into Open Gear, and then you can start introducing more uh, Open Gear gear and get all the kind of the nice, nice cool features, right? Okay. And without having to retrain your ops saying, now you've got to access a device this way, it's all still the same. That's really great. It's very, very good. Cool. Um, yeah, so as I said, yeah, this is how the, uh, the Lighthouse VPN works. Um, so it's a northbound connection. What, what's great about this is it really works well with the inbuilt cellular. So when the, your remote um, site fails the pro or, or you're turning up the uh, new remote site for the first time, you don't have a primary WAN connection, you can use the cellular connection and the Open Gear node will literally just re-tunnel over the cellular, right? The gateway will just sw switch. And then when your, your primary network comes up, it'll route back to the Lighthouse you know, via least cost path. And um, the other thing that this is great for in terms of cellular is um, it gets through that carrier NAT. So I know, um, for example, Verizon uh, have announced they're running out of IPv4 addresses. So you used to be able to pay for an, a static IPv4 address. That was a really easy way to get into your cellular connections. Uh, now, and it's been the case in Europe for a long time, um, you can't get a, a static v4 address uh, for love nor money. Um, so you're literally you're on a, 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 a RFC 1918 from your um, from your carrier, and this allows you to get access into those private addresses. Um, so in terms of the console gateway, uh, this is what we're talking about. This is the central portal to access all your managed devices. So I guess this is the bread and butter of a central out band management um, solution. It's actually getting to the devices that are under management. Um, we've got two ways to do that. Uh, we've got uh, our console gateway UI. Um, and that's based on TTYD now. It used to run shell in a box as the background. Um, it's a fully HTML5, um, uh, pure HTML5 terminal em emulator inside your browser. Um, that means there's no Flash, Java, plugins, anything like that. And um, TTYD uh, above and beyond shell in a box does support for copy and paste, which is super useful. Um, if you actually want, you use your secure CRT, your PuTTY, your open uh, SSH clients, then we've got the console gateway CLI. And that's kind of a superset of the port manager software that's embedded in each of the uh, Open Gear nodes. That uh, gives you a central, central access um, uh, through SSH, either via a chooser menu, menu or you can log in with a, a specially crafted um, uh, username and password. Uh, sorry, username. Uh, what's what's kind of cool, or what's, what, what is cool here, is the, the way that um, Console Gateway works is you can literally log in um, uh, and you just have to give it the name of the managed device that you're looking for. So your operators, you know, might be like junior operators, it might be you when it's three o'clock and the network's melting down and you don't necessarily want to know, I want to get to this console server in this rack and to port three that's cabled into the switch, right? I just want to get to the switch. Console, uh, console gateway lets you do that. You just give it the name of the device you're looking for and it sends you straight through, whether you're going over cellular or whether you're going in band. Um, yep, so we're just starting to build out a little network diagram of what we're talking about. So we've got the uh, node connected to the console of Lighthouse VPN, and this is the, the users over console gateway. Can you just quickly, I, you didn't have a whole lot of information in there, but um, for the VPN, I, I mean, that, that's something, you know, it's easy to put up on the slide, but yep. can you get, share a little bit of information about what you're doing for VPN there? I know you said open VPN, but... Yep. Yeah, it's so, so basically what happens is um, when the node enrolls, it, basically, it, it starts the process off by hitting the uh, registration API in Lighthouse using a, a token. Um, what Lighthouse does then is generate certificates uh, and um, gives it an IP address on the Lighthouse VPN, we're calling it, which is the open VPN, and then says, okay, here's your URL for your uh, enrollment bundle. The node then goes and hits that URL, pulls down the full configuration, and installs it and brings up, brings up the VPN. Um, so it's like kind of fully automated, and when you unenroll the node, it revokes the, the certificates. So um, yeah, it's like a layer three. Um, it's um, so right now we're kind of using it mainly for communications between the lighthouse and the node, but there's no reason in future in the way that we've kind of architected this. Um, if you want to actually have full routed access through to your, your remote network, uh, if it's failed, um, that's going to be a possibility in future as well. What what kind of scale? Can you get with that? Yep. So I mean, we're designing to the thousands of nodes, right? So that's that's the kind of scale that we're looking for, and that's how we've architected the system. Um, yep. So just to talk about uh, a couple more features. So zero touch enrollment. So we've extended the ZTP process. So zero touch provisioning, where whereby um, you know, you'll pull your your config from a, a you get a DHCP 
key option that gives you a URL to pull, pull your config and your firmware. We've extended that to actually pass the enrollment parameters as well. So the, addre the uh, address of the RESTful API endpoint for Lighthouse, um, so you can get that enrollment. Um, you can get that um, OpenVPN uh, bundle. Um, and also, um, uh, the way that you can apply this once you've created the, uh, uh, the enrollment bundle is that you can um, yeah, apply it via ZTP, uh, UICLI, or USB key. Um, what is quite cool about this is you can actually associate enrollment bundles with metadata tags. So that means I know um, what initial configuration I've rolled out to all these devices, right? So that enrollment bundle follows the devices all the way through their life cycle. Um, and that makes us be able, that allows us to do things like automatic um, uh, permissions assignment for users. So I'll show you that in a moment. Yeah, so that's what this slide is, right? So you're just saying like, basically you can assign um, nodes uh, metadata, and that metadata might be geographical, like this is literally, you know, in, in this state or in this market or, you know, this part of the country, topological, it's in this data center or row, or operational, this is, uh, this um, node is managed by my security guys, my um, NetOps teams, or, you know, the facilities, um, if it's like PDUs and things like that. You can link the node um, from enrollment uh, to one of these, um, to this meta metadata, which uh, adds it to a smart group. And then what you can also do is you can link user groups to smart groups as well. So you can, when you literally have a node enroll uh, into um, a Lighthouse, uh, using this smart group linkage, you automatically have users, say the user might be in the security group, and the node might be, uh, have you know, security tagged as its um, operational group as well. They're both in the, uh, the uh, same smart group, so therefore the user automatically is granted access. Does that map over to like AD? Uh, yeah, so it's basically just using group names. So all of the um, all of the smart group logic is inside um, uh, inside Lighthouse. But in terms of the list of groups, which users have access to which which groups, you can have that in AD or your radius, your attack access, stuff like that. Yeah, we're done for time. Cool. Uh, yeah. So the uh, RESTful API. Um, yeah. So I guess again, uh, for those playing at home, we'll just do really quick primer. Um, RESTful APIs, I guess, ostensibly started as ways for smartphone apps um, uh, to get data from more heavy uh, web services. Um, and where they've really exploded, I guess, is the um, in the management of virtual infrastructure, like things like Amazon EC2. So you can spin up and pull down um, uh, uh, compute um, nodes uh, as, as you need them to handle uh, website peak load. So what we're doing now is embedding RESTful APIs in physical infrastructure to allow that kind of similar um, uh, uh, levels of automation and prog programmability. So RESTful API, uh, there's yeah one there's an engine running in the Lighthouse and also in the nodes, um, and I, we've kind of gone through this. There is a link to our documentation here. Uh, it's in RAML and there's a nicely formatted HTML thing there too, um, so you can have a quick look at our um, RESTful API doc if you'd like. <coughs> 